Welcome back, everybody. Well, we have a lot going on after hours. You can see that we have Oracle up about $10 at the time recording this. We'll get into why that's happening, why Asan is where it is as well. Actually trading up about 1%. We're going to get to that. We have some of these little guys out there. LFMD trading up about 16%. Not going to spend a lot of time there. Uh, you obviously had earnings tonight. Where we have to focus is the earnings tomorrow and how that's going to affect the market. We also need to see how we are going to play this with Bitcoin and what we're going to do there. This is definitely something that we have to review. What's happening with the ES? I'm going to clean up all my levels because we do have this dragonfly that's sitting right there. And where are we sitting with some of these ideas? So we're going to just jump right into it. Obviously, everybody here can see this bar. And we all know that this kind of bar usually forms a hammer. And then if you flip the hammer, you're in good shape. Now, we're going to have to focus on these wicks. And these wicks are not just here. We have to focus on the CPI and then how we react to that. In other words, are we going to get over these levels? If you look at these levels, it's pretty clear that you've just been having a really tough time getting over anything up here. And we're constantly rejecting, rejecting, uneven able to get over the open. And that's definitely something that we have to pay attention to. So we have certain issues here that we obviously want to watch, right? And we could see these issues and we really have zero leadership. Now with Oracle trading up, is that going to give us some leadership? Before we even think about that, we're going to have to take a look at what's going on with CPI. Now, to start, CPI comes out tomorrow. And then after CPI, we're going to get the PPI on Thursday. All right. So here is the core inflation rate month over month, year over year. And then core cuts out what? Food and energy, just so you know that. This was consensus. This is forecast. This is previous. They are expecting core inflation with food and energy cut out. They are expecting it higher. All right. So this is not going the direction that we want. This is actually going this way. That is not what you want to see. Core inflation year over year rate. They are looking at 3.7 versus 3.9. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Core inflation is now up, right? More than all inflation. So everything else that is not food, that is not energy is actually up more than if we add food and energy, that's kind of interesting if you think about it. Nevertheless, what's important about this is we do not want this coming in with a four handle. We just do not want to see that. That will create a lot of the, hey, are we going to go higher? Uh, or is inflation back? Did inflation never go away? So as much as we're going to say everyone's going to be watching this and they will be, you need to watch this. You do not want to see a four handle here. We don't want to see four percent, 410, nothing like that. You'll pretty much see this on the equity markets. It'll be just straight down. Uh, it, it's just in my opinion, it's in my opinion. So if we take a look at the inflation rate 3.1, and then the consensus is 3.1, 3.2 forecast, previous 3.1. What's interesting about this is you are split at investment banks. A lot of investment banks are actually greater than 3.1 this time around. So you're going to have a, a real pickle in your hands because you have institutions that are saying we're going to come in line. There are certain institutions saying we're going to come in lower and there are certain institutions saying we're going to come in higher. Now, that is normally not the case. You usually have everybody in line and then you have one outlier this way or one outlier this way. You have several outliers saying higher. So that means they are advising their clientele, institutional clientele, to expect a higher than expected number. So if that doesn't happen, we could see a nice rally out of it. If it does happen, the other people are out of position and they're going to have an issue. But this is definitely the focal point. And this is really what everybody needs to watch tomorrow. But before we even dive into some of these earnings, I want to go through a couple things out there in regards to Bitcoin. Bitcoin hit, I believe it's an all-time high. We have all the Bitcoiners jumping around this time saying, you know, this is really it. We're going to a million. Maybe it is. Maybe it is going to a million. Who knows? Uh, but again, what I always look at is this stuff. And then someone from the crypto community will give me a reasonable explanation for why this uh, decided to move at two o'clock in the morning. I'm sure it's completely not some kind of flim flam that would get this thing to just jump, you know, four thousand dollars and, you know, in what, two hours when no one's really paying attention. Maybe it's just me. We could just say that it's Asia, which leads us to a, a myriad of other questions. Nevertheless, it popped up. Now, what's fascinating to me is uh, Saturday's video, I had a statement. I says they come for the generals last. The generals to me right now are not NVIDIA. They're not the AVGOs of the world. Uh, they're the Bitcoin names because they were the last to stand. Now, not just the 
uh, CLS case, which we had a nice short on. Um, I didn't have time tonight to actually put this one together, but we had a really good short on this today. Like, it was just absolutely perfect. Uh, if you want me to run through it and how we picked it off and how we were able to grab it, let me know. And I am more than happy to run it in tomorrow's video, but comment below if you want to see it. Uh, I think it'd be, a, I think it's worth watching how we saw it and how we got into this and how we knew this was the one versus Mara micro strategies. And we were able to identify it, even though we were short uh, Mara as well. And these things were just, these things are just layup shorts at this point. I mean, if this quote happening even ever happens that everybody seems to think is going to happen, then the miners are just literally going to go out of business. It's, it's just really that simple. So anyway, if we take a look at this and we look at how they're acting, it doesn't really get much clearer that that is a super technical breakdown on all these names slicing through the 55 CLSK. Uh, this, they do this through that energy, They're the energy savers, Beaver Power. So it looks like you're probably going to be lying right to that 12, 12 and a half, like super quick. This is really, really nasty stuff. The best hope for us is that it gaps up tomorrow. But where am I going with this? I'm going here with it and we're going to get into the rest of it. Bitcoin's up four and a half percent. What happened today? These names could even stay up with Bitcoin up four and a half percent. What the heck is going to happen to them when Bitcoin does drop? And I know people don't want to know this, but someday Bitcoin will go red. It will have a red day. It will not go up every single day for the rest of its entirety, right? Because of the because of the happening. So we will have a bad day when we have that bad day. Let's make this uh, that bear chart again. But if we take a look at this, we can see very clearly the reversal. All right, you can see the reversal on Mara. These things are just outright shorts. I mean, it is. If I was to write a textbook on what a short looks like that's what a short looks like. It doesn't really get any clearer. That is a reversal, uh, very clean to see. And I could probably just drop the 55 right there and you can see how we're slicing and dicing right through it. Riot, I really haven't bothered with just cause it's so cheap. I don't really care about it. Uh, there was like a buck there, but the other names, I think there's more, there's more money to be made there on the short side. So I'm sticking there. Now, this was another sign today that I think personally, that these names have had it. First, this is called the Marbuzu Black. It's not exact because you have a little bit of a wick up here, but that is about as textbook of a reversal bar as you can get, closing at the low. Doesn't mean that it's over, but it's very rare to not see this come down somewhere in here. Now, that said, what was different about today more than any other day with it? And I think this is worth pointing out as we go through these names, because I think it's important to watch these names tomorrow. You have CPI, and then and then it's time for us to you know play the game and see how this goes tomorrow. But if we take a look at coin, and we just watch how this is going straight across, boom, 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 right? You see it all? Okay. And then you gap fill, and you can't even hold the gap fill. And I thought that was pretty interesting because here you are and the gap fill support became what? Resistance. It was a perfect buy today. We pointed out when we were doing the live trading, I didn't take it. Some of the people did. I was doing too many other things. But if you look at that straight, perfect, right back to the open, the open was right here. This is the one thing that we have not been seeing. And this is very different than any of these other days. You are on all these days that Bitcoin went up. Not only did the stock go up, but the open, that was it. We never got over the opening price. Forget that you have that resistance there, but you never got over that opening price all day, did you? Every time you went there, you just had a net seller all day long. So we now know that that 270, I mean, everyone's gonna say, well, that's not rocket science. Obviously 270 is a resistance point, right? But it was so much a resistance point today that even at the end of the day, when the densest favorite time kicked in, we can see very clearly that there was no buyers. It was just straight selling. I mean, and the, the implied volatility of the puts is so great, it's hard to make any money. I actually bought the 60s, paid 11 for them, and by the time they got down to here, they were only 15. I mean, it was, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, that I was able to catch 10 point move and only catch like three or four dollars out of the option. I did much better just shorting the stock. So fast forward, this is where you are and this is where you closed. That is a very different bar from then when Bitcoin goes up. So for example, the last red bar was on the fifth. Now, if you go and take a look here, that's really the same day that we were down here. All these other days, we've been green. And since then, coin's been green. So every day that Bitcoin really is doing its thing, Coins following through today, not so much. And then we have this little peach, MicroStrategies. Now, I am a, obviously a huge fan of this company. It's something that I've been buying on and off since down here. When the valuation made sense because you were bu actually buying the Bitcoin at a discount to market, uh, now you're paying about $12 billion over uh, where the Bitcoin is. And roughly when I figured it out, you're paying about a buck 25 for each Bitcoin, even with the new addition. So you're paying 125,000 when you can go into the open market and buy it. Um, these things end in tears. The question is when, 
So I actually did short this, and just to, to be full disclosure, I have a short on in puts overnight, and we'll see how this plays out. But now I've got that low of the day, and it is what it is. I couldn't really buy calls uh, over the weekend or want to hold it because the calls were just so darn expensive. Even the puts, when I caught, I caught a hundred point drop on there, maybe like eighty points, uh, maybe, maybe the fifteen fifties made twenty dollars. Maybe. Yeah, it was a little over 20. So they're not really moving. So I, I did, I scaled, I scaled them down uh, and we'll see what happens. But I think there's a move here. Am I saying that it's over? No, but I think that when you start looking at these names and you start seeing these kinds of moves on a chart, to think that there's not some kind of retest or some kind of level is just silly. I mean, it's just nonsense. Of course, there's going to be a test of some kind. And where are you going to start seeing cracks of that test? You're probably going to start seeing cracks of that test when you start seeing what we refer to as a negative divergence. And we talk about these all the time. We've been talking about these on those Saturday videos. And really what we're talking about is that you have the underlying asset is going up, but the stock in and of itself that is tied to the asset starts to go down. Once you start to see that, it's over. That's usually a topping sign, okay? And you can even go back and say that with Mara, that once we hit that top, and then from there, we actually saw Bitcoin continue. That was pretty much it. You could kind of bounce around and bonk around in here. But the people that really made money here, they were the short sellers. Short there, pops over, short, short. Okay, maybe you got caught, trapped two, three days. But that was really it. Other than that, they've been killing it. The shorts on these names, same with CLSK. Uh, you really have to have that overnight risk to be making any money in this thing. From, from here over, from February, you need a ton of overnight risk to be in this thing. I'd rather take the short side during the day. I mean, it's very clear that's where the money is, except for like one day, candidly. So it is what it is. But that's where my head is with it. And I'm starting to believe that we're possibly putting in some kind of top here. Uh, I do want to go through some of these other big dogs here and talk about a couple other things. But let's just stick with the big dogs for a second and talk about NVIDIA and what we're seeing there. And Because I do think that this, you know, as Goldman says lately, as NVIDIA goes, goes the, the NASDAQ. And I do agree with that. But we have to kind of look at this for a second and say, okay, well, where, where are we really, right? Like, where have we gone to? And let's just pop this in. We've gone to the 12. I mean, that's as far really as you've gone. You've gone to the 12. So it's not like we've completely fallen out of bed. I personally think a test of 786 is most likely, but you have a doji here. Now, if that's just devil's advocate, you get a really good CPI tomorrow and you know, this is how the stool works. I'm not gonna bore everybody with it tonight. Too much to get through. But if we take a look right here and we see how this is gonna play out, right? Then what? Well, what is that gonna do for us? Well, you might flip and now you might have a base. You might be able to build off of this something to think about. I'm not so sure from what I'm seeing out there right now. I'm, I'm not so sure. If I go in here and I click through the, uh, the three, the five, and the eight on NVIDIA, and I'm using a 15-minute chart to highlight the three, the five, and the eight, you can start to see how these are sloping down. Now, have we been here before? Yeah, you've been here once, and then you had earnings. Eh, we don't really have earnings right now. So what is the catalyst that's going to say, you know what I need to do? I need to buy NVIDIA up here. Um, I'm not really saying it. And so we have to make sure that we get up over this before these start coming down. Because if they start coming down, like if that starts like, you know, it starts coming down like this, or this one starts coming down, right? And then you get that cross. Well, now you have downward pressure, right? It's, it's not, it's, it's bad that you're below them. But if you start getting that sloping pressure, right? You don't, you don't want that. That's just, that's not, that's not helpful, is it? So we don't want that, right? So we're going to make sure that, well, that we're just out of the way. Um, the real money on that was actually short today. And I did quite well shorting that like pre-market. I was even doing it pre-market live when we were live today. And I will make sure that we are live before CPI tomorrow. So we will go from there. Uh, but I did want to talk about that. I want to talk about SMCI. Uh, this is not really breaking down, guys. And this is holding up much better, much better than anything else that's in that tech realm. Um, to me, it is anyway. And you know, we can kind of look into why that is. But let's make this white as well. Drop that down. You're nowhere near that 12. And we're going to use that as a demarcation line for a moment here. But you're nowhere near that. When you look at AMD, like AMD looks ready to fall off a cliff here. I mean, that looks really bad. There's your reversal during the day, the drop, the break. And now you have these gaps that you have to fill. These are all exhaustion gaps. And this is just beginning the exhaustion to the downside. So this is certainly something that we want to pay attention to. But the biggest thing for us is going to be what we see going on with uh, Bitcoin and then Oracle as well. Now, I do read all your comments. And one of the comments that keeps popping up is, can you start showing us swing trades or trades that you've held for a longer period of time? So I quantify my trades by three different sectors. I do it through 
special situations, long-term ideas, and swing trade ideas. So this was a, a long-term idea. And I, I want to just drop this in so that you can see it for, with the timestamp. This is something that we did in the community. We bought this at 1128 uh, on 2023, 1139. You can see it right there, uh, 6220. So what we're doing is right into this area, right in here, we're, we're getting involved. And the reason we got involved was actually because of NVIDIA's earnings. I read a couple of research reports. It looked very promising for their next quarter, which was here. So the goal this entire time was to get up and in by 10% and then go from there. And that's what we did. So this is actually where we entered because there seems to be a, uh, what I would refer to as a misnomer that all, all I'm doing is just doing day trades. Uh, and that's not really the case. So this is actually when we got out of the entire trade and there were two ads, but I'll just leave this right here so that you can see it. So that'd be 220 and then that's the 12th. And then the 20th would probably be right around here when it finally cracked. I was like, that's enough. And we had some scale outs before then as well. And I'll pop those down here so that you can see them. Um, we had a secondary long-term ad that was at 70. It was up over 100% since December. On the 12th this day, we just kicked that out and locked the whole thing in on this. So in December, we saw another spot to add and we did. And then I think that this one should take it home and that should be the end of this one. But I want to show this stuff a little bit more. Comment below on this because I know people were talking about it and you could just kind of see trimmed up and that must be on the eighth. Yep, trimmed 50% up of the 100% long-term account position, second long-term ad. We weren't moving and then what we do is we kicked it out on the 12th. So we kicked out a portion, locked in a profit and then we went from there, right? So we were actually able to take advantage of that. But as this goes along, I'll start showing more of those. I have a couple others set up but I don't know that I'm gonna to get to all of them this evening. But that was one idea that we did and that was not even set up as a swing trade. That was set up as a long-term idea and whenever I do long-term ideas, we're setting up that we're gonna be in them for at least three months. Um, another one that we're in right now actually is this BBAR as I'm thinking about it. That might be another one to just kind of walk people through very quickly. But for me, the thing with the BBAR here is that this is really just a play on what's going on if you actually understand Argentina. Uh, and I've got a pretty good read on that stuff, quite frankly. I've been around a while trading over two decades. So like I, I get what's happening here and how the, the, these names are actually trading at like four times earnings. It's kind of silly. Uh, that's fine if you're in this communist regime that they had down there, but or leftist regime, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. But uh, when you start going into more of a capitalist society, people start making money. And this is what's going to start happening. Their banks are going to do better, more capital inflows, outflows, more business is done. So in 11.22, we paid 450. We've done nothing with it. Um, tomorrow, I'll show a special situation one, but there's there's literally too much for us to get into tonight before I go any further. So I do just want to cover this on Oracle. To me, I thought so far now at the time of recording this, the conference call is going on. Now, Oracle adjustment beats 141, 138 estimate sales were missed by very, very little, like very little, probably not even enough that people are going to be concerned about it when you start talking about numbers and you're carrying out three decimal points uh, to point out the miss. Uh, I mean, it's not even it's not even a tenth of 1%. Uh, and you're up 7% year over year on sales. So this was overall, it was pretty positive and the stock re responded accordingly. Now they're all doing the same thing with the quarterly dividend, uh, 40 cents a share. There's nothing really new there with Oracle, but I think it's important just to note that that's kind of where these stocks are going. We saw Dell do it as well. People starting to do more of the dividends. I mean, Oracle always had something like that going on, but it's just important to note. Uh, but the way they're characterized, this is a revenue miss. It's really hard if you're going out three decimal points to kind of refer to that as a miss, but we can do that and say that it missed. Um, according to Benzinga, the company 41, total performance obligations, 29%. Cloud revenue were up 25%. Uh, infrastructure revenue, 49%, cloud applications up 14, Fusion Cloud, 18, NetSuite Cloud revenues were up 20. We expect continue receiving large contracts, reserving cloud infrastructure capacity to the demand of our Gen 2 AI infrastructure substantially exceeds supply. So demand for infrastructure substantially exceeds supply, despite the fact that we're opening new and expanding existing cloud data centers very rapidly. Be great to know who makes data centers. Maybe you could go find a REIT that does that. Might be something to think about. We expect that 43% of all current 80 billion of remaining performance obligations will be recognized as revenue over the next four quarters and that our gen cloud infrastructure will remain hyper growth phase of 53% in Q3. This is interesting. We expect that 43% of our current 80 billion remaining performance obligations will be recognized as revenue over the next four quarters. So they're basically telling you to, to take 43% of this and start working it into their revenue. I, overall, I thought this was really good. 
and the stock is trading up as the conference calls going on. So, so far, we don't really have any nightmares there. This will certainly be one to watch uh, to see how people respond to the quarter. But overall, from what I'm seeing, everything seems pretty good and it seems to be firing in all cylinders. So maybe this will be that ray of light that will give the software names a little bit of a bounce tomorrow. That is it.